Hi, my name is Kweko. I am a pharmacist. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at berberine and its use in the management of diabetes or blood sugars. We're going to take a look at what it is, how to use it. We'll take a look at the dosage, some side effects, and some general considerations that you should be aware of if you decide to use berberine as a means to manage your blood sugars or as a means to manage your diabetes. I briefly want to state that this video is for informational purposes only. It's general in nature, so please do not start, stop, or make any changes to your medication regimen without further talking to your doctor about it. So for starters, what is berberine? Well, berberine is a natural compound that is obtained or extracted from setting trees such as the Barbary, the Golden Seal, or the Oregon Grape. It has been used for centuries in traditional medicine in managing conditions such as inflammation and also even to treat setting infections. In recent years, berberine has gained a lot of attention in its use in the management of diabetes and its complications. Several studies have shown that berberine is actually able to help manage blood sugars and also improve insulin sensitivity. And not only that, berberine has also been shown to have additional benefits such as helping in the management of cholesterol and even to some extent affecting blood pressure or reducing blood pressure. So the first way by which berberine helps in the management of blood sugar levels is by stimulating an enzyme called activated protein kinase or AMPK. Now, when this enzyme is stimulated, it causes the uptake of blood sugar or circulating glucose in the blood to be transferred into the cell. And that is ultimately where you need it, right? You don't want the sugar circulating in the blood. You want it in the cell for energy production and all the things that the cell needs the glucose for. The second way by which berberine may help manage blood sugars is by inhibiting certain enzymes and genes that are involved in causing the liver to produce glucose and release them into the blood. Now, if you are not aware, the liver actually can also produce glucose or sugar from non-carbohydrate sources, a process called gluconeogenesis. What berberine does is that it's able to regulate those enzymes that control the manufacture of glucose by the liver. So in other words, you don't have the liver also manufacturing glucose and dumping it into the bloodstream for somebody who already has issues eliminating the glucose from their system. Berberine has also been shown to enhance insulin secretion by activating the beta cells of the pancreas. That is where the insulin comes from. Berberine has also been shown to improve insulin sensitivity or in other words it makes the cells more sensitive to insulin. So you need less amount of insulin to transport the, the blood sugar or the glucose into the cells where they are needed for energy production. Berberine also to a small degree may reduce oxidative stress and inflammation by scavenging for free radicals and compounds that cause inflammation in the body called cytokines. So that is an, an added bonus that berberine can confer on people who take it. Now, in addition to its direct anti-diabetic properties, berberine may also have additional benefits that would be useful to people who have diabetes. So, for example, berberine may protect against diabetic nephropathy or kidney damage as a result of diabetes by reducing proteinuria or the amount of protein that is excreted in the urine. Berberine may also protect against diabetic retinopathy, which is characterized by formation of new blood vessels on the retina where they are not supposed to be. And if it progresses, it may lead to blood vision and even in a very extreme cases, it may lead to loss of sight. Now, this new blood formation on the retina is called angiogenesis and berberine has been shown to slow down this process. So in so doing, protecting the eyes and may protect against diabetic retinopathy. Berberine may also be involved in the protection against diabetic neuropathy which is nerve pain by enhancing regeneration of nerves and their function. There have been several clinical trials and studies that have compared berberine to traditional diabetes medications like metformin, like glipizide or rosiglitazone. And what they found out is that berberine is actually very comparable to these medications in terms of managing fasting blood sugar levels or postprandial glucose levels, that is your glucose levels after you've eaten. And even long-term HbA1c, berberine has, shown, has been shown to be very comparable to these other traditional medications that are used in the management of diabetes. So in one particular study where there was a meta-analysis of 14 randomized control trials involving 1,068 participants with type 2 diabetes, they found that berberine reduced fasting blood sugar levels by 16 milligrams per deciliter or 0.9 millimoles per liter and prosprandial glucose levels by 1.9 millimoles per liter or 34 milligrams per deciliter and hemoglobin H1C levels by 0.9% compared to the placebo or no treatment. Now, they found these reductions to be very similar to what was obtained when they used uh, metformin, when they used glipizide, and when they used rosiglitazone, which are traditional diabetes management medications. 
Now let's talk about dosage. Now as with almost all supplements, there's really no standardized dose for bear brain, but most of the studies and the trials use dosages ranging between 500 milligrams and 1,500 milligrams. Typically they will give it in two or three divided doses. Say maybe they will give 500 milligrams three times a day. The thing though about the dosage is that you, really, you probably want to start low and work yourself up. Now just like in some of these other diabetic medications like metformin, they can cause potential side effects and most of those side effects tend to be gastrointestinal. In other words, it's related to your uh, maybe either diarrhea, nausea, vomiting. And one that seemed to occur quite a bit is flatulence or gas. So for those reasons, people usually are, rec it's recommended that people work their way up from the lowest or the minimum effective dose and kind of work your way up if you need to or as in how your body tolerates it, then you can increase the dose as needed. Now let's look at some considerations that you should think about if you are, are trying to take bear brain or if you're already taking it. Number one, it is not as researched as medications like metformin. You know, it's not FDA approved, so it hasn't really gone through robust clinical trials. Though there have been studies that have been done on them, they usually tend to be relatively smaller studies compared to what would have been done, say, if they were trying to seek approval to dispense it as a medication. So that is one con about berberine. Uh, the second con about berberine is that it is relatively expensive if you compare it to something like metformin. You know, metformin will almost give you the same result, but for most people, metformin, especially if you have insurance, will cost you just a couple of bucks a month to stay on metformin. Uh, Bebring will run you anywhere between 20 or $30 if you check on Amazon for a, a product that will last you maybe 30 days. So when it comes to cost issues, of course, if there's reason that you are not taking metformin and you're looking at Bebring, then maybe you may be willing to spend a little bit more to get a Bebring, but cost is a little bit of a factor. And the other thing also, like I mentioned earlier, it is not FDA regulated. So if you are going to buy a Berberine product, you want to make sure that you do your research well, you know which manufacturer you're buying it from, make sure that they follow good manufacturing practices and they are a reputable company. Because the last thing you want is to buy something that you think is Berberine and then you're really not getting what you need. Uh, for that reason, I have researched a few companies and I have put their products uh, with links in the description if you want to check it out. Those are companies that I researched and I found them that to be reputable enough to recommend their products. They are not sponsoring this video or anything like that, but I just thought that they are reputable companies who I can trust. So what is my final take on Berberine? Well, my final take on Berberine is that it's very promising. It can be used in addition to some of the medications that you're taking to manage your diabetes, or if you're having some side effects that you are not able to tolerate and you want to consider Berberine, that's always a good choice. But the only thing I'll say is that make sure you are running this by your doctor, because sometimes when Berberine is combined with some of these other diabetic medications, it may result in hypoglycemia see me how your blood sugar levels go too low thank you so much for staying through i hope you found some value in this video stay blessed catch you on the next video